situation you've never failed. Continue to take over this service, Lord. Continue to minister to us, O Lord. Continue to speak to us, Jehovah. Continue to bring your people out of offices and bless those that are in office, bless those that are at home. I disappear that you may appear, Holy Spirit. Come and speak to your servants. I disappear that you may speak to me and speak to these, your sons and daughters. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. I, I again stand here to thank God for yet another opportunity to be before him, especially at lunch hour. Amen. Greet your neighbor for me and tell them, Reverend Patricia Lucky loves you. Greets you in Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Reverend Patricia Lucky. By the grace of God, I am the assistant vicar, St. Andrew's Church, Bokoto. And I am born again. I am a mother of many children. Praise God. Boys and girls, by his grace. And this afternoon, I came with my chaplain, Brenda Nashembugwe. Yes, she's a minister. She ministers in the vehicle. So those are our navigators and does many other things in the ministry. I'm happy to see you, Mama Bishop. It's been long. On behalf of the church, I would like to thank the leadership for inviting me to share on a message dealing with satanic intimidations. Tell your neighbor, dealing with satanic intimidations. That's a very good one, <laughs> especially in the context that we are in. As individuals, as a nation, there are so many things happening. But what is intimidation? This is to threaten. This, this is to threaten, to frighten, to scare. Praise the Lord to have control, to manipulate many things, you know, one word meaning so many things. And so you can find where you belong. What is manipulating you? What is threatening you? What is scaring you? What is controlling you? Praise God. Ask yourself those questions so that when we say dealing, then you're going to begin to deal with what is controlling you. It could be fear. Praise the Lord. We're going to read scripture. Then we will go into dive into the message and be able to pray. They told me that deliveries are, so I will not I want to pray as well. Praise God. I'm going to be reading to us interesting books, first Samuel chapter seventeen. And then we will move into another one. First Samuel chapter seventeen. I'll read from verse thirty. It's good to start from one. When you have your own time, you'll start from one. But I'll begin from verse 32. The word of God says, don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul said. There is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted I have been taking care of many of my father's sheep and goats. And he said, when a lion or a bear comes, comes to you to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear. Will rescue me, the Lord who rescued me, I'll say that again, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Finally, Saul consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. 
Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the, the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what was like, what it was like. For he had never, never worn such things before. I can't go in this, he protested to Saul. I am not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bearer ahead of him, staring in contempt at this rude-faced boy. Am I a dog? He roared at David. Then you, that you come at me with a stick. He cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. Goliath yelled. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with swords, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies. The God of the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you, and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies, I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel, and everyone assembled here, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. Verse 48, as Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him, reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone. He held it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sunk in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone. For he had no stone, then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from his sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a very beautiful story we've read from Sunday school up to now. But I usually tell people that when the word of God comes to us, every time it comes with new revelations. Praise God. Now, so much is happening today. In this story, we see so much that was happening. And Saul, being a leader, had this young man called David. And young, this young man wanted to go and fight the Philistine. And Saul said, no, you are only a boy, you're only a youth, you know. Those are usually statements that intimidate. Even in ministry, we find people that speak like that. You're only a one year old, maybe ordained reverend. And you are only a musician. You're only a warden. You're only a wife, a woman, a man, you know. What training have you in battle? You know, those can be intimidating statements, but look at how David boldly addresses Saul, the leader, and tells him, mm -mm, I have a testimony. Tell your neighbor, I have a testimony. I have a testimony. The God who helped me kill the bear and the lion in the bush will help me deal with this Philistine too. I love that statement. How I pray that today as we deal with satanic intimidation, your confession must change. Praise the Lord. Your confession must change. We say confession is power. Some of us, when we are faced with situations, we begin to confess, I am finished. And you really will be finished. I am dead. You will die. Do you hear me? When you see a giant ahead of you, a giant situation, you know, a situation that has, has been so hard for so many giants, so many seniors, and you are coming up to confront it. Many times when this situation is speaking to us, it is loud like Saul. 
Do you hear me? Situations can be loud. They can be scary. They can be bold, by the way. They can be speaking to your ears louder than you are hearing the voice of God. And because of that, you may lose your esteem and actually lose the battle. Praise the Lord. But David did not allow that intimidation to go into his mind. Many times the devil speaks loud so that our mindset can change about our God. Ask your neighbor, do you know your God? Do you know your God? Do you know your Savior? Do you know that he is the Lord of the heaven's armies? Do you know that the situations that are attacking you are defying? They are defying the heaven's armies. I love my version. It says this Philistine has defied the Lord of the heaven's armies. Many times the situations that attack us defy the word of God. They come saying your God cannot. They come saying you're only a woman. They come saying you're only a man. And then you forget what the Bible says. Do you remember from the book of Genesis up to Revelation, intimidations of Satan begin right from Genesis. Do you remember how God created Adam and Eve? Put them in this beautiful garden of Eden. How did Satan come? He came and said, did God really say? Do you hear me? Now, some of us have lost our positions just like the way Eve lost her position of favor before God. Why? Because Eve listened to the deception of Satan. She listened to the intimidation of Satan. Many times the people that win us, win us at a place of just re-asking you what you're saying. I've ever been in an interview and they've brought this guy to intimidate you in the panel. His looks alone, he just, he's just been brought to look at you like this. He's folded his arms, his crossed leg, and he's looking at you and then you begin to, to, to fidget. You even forget what you're about to say. A friend of mine went to an interview, and then this gentleman just looked at her, and she began to cry. She said, everything that I knew vanished. Now, it was by the grace of God that she got the job, but she tells me, if it was just my appearance in the panel, I cried, I panicked. Even the things I had known, she'd been working for many years. She had the experience. And so, experience does not save us if we do not know our God. Tell that to your neighbor, that your experience may not save you if you do not know your God. If you do not know the authority that is higher than authorities on the earth, you will actually fear the rules, the regulations on earth, and, and forget the one that owns the, the people that make the rules and regulations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we can see this story is one of the kind, that David did not allow satanic intimidation or of Saul's statement, even the Philistine, you know, Saul was the first one. Then the Philistine comes, you know, Goliath walked out to David with his shield and told him, how can you young boy come to me? Look at the way you are. <laughs> but David did not get intimidated about that. Even having told him that today I will kill you and give your body to birds, he said, okay, the God who helped me the other time will actually do that to you, and your body will also be given to birds. Praise the Lord. So when we are dealing with satanic intimidation, we should know that, one, there are things that Satan puts out to us. Number one is fear. It puts out the spirit of fear. Okay? Fear, so that you may be defeated in battle or in the situation you are in. Number two is doubt. Number three is panic, so that you can make quick decisions and go off. And some of us have panicked at decision making. Even at marriage, we have panicked. Why? Because people have said statements that are negative. You're too old, when are you marrying? You get me? You're too old, when are you marrying? A man, that is for a man. 
For a lady, when are you getting married? You're too beautiful, but no man comes. Haven't you seen anyone? And then the mothers begin to gather the singers and they begin to, to talk to you. Is there, is there anyone saying something? And then the grandmother is saying, do you want me to die before I see my son? Those are all statements. They are all intimidating. And they can cause you panic and you make a wrong choice of a marriage partner. I am a counselor and I've spoken to so many people who are crying. And when you ask them how they got into a relationship before marriage, they will tell you some of these statements. Now, when it comes to marriage again, you have succeeded the devil there. You come to marriage, then you take one year without children, they start. Hello? When are you giving birth? You married one that does not function. They have all those statements that are intimidating. Now, when you take two years, issues increase. Three, four, increase, increase of intimidation. And if you do not know your God and hang in there, you panic and make a wrong decision. You go to wrong pastors. They give you all the water to anoint you. They give you all the anointing oil. They anoint everywhere until even the bam bams are anointed. You, we have heard of those statements and daughters have come to our offices crying. How this pastor said, I must wash you down there for you to conceive. I have a spiritual daughter who came to me and told me that story, how her own mother dragged her to, to, to a shrine. And, and, and she remembers the witch doctor telling her, I have to wash you. I have to bathe the whole of you and wash your private parts for you to, 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 <laughs> to conceive. And this is her own mother. What curse is that that you bring upon your own daughter? And when she, 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 she began to look for a child, the child was not forthcoming. And then we began to cry out to God in repentance because it was mom. Now, when you're dealing with satanic intimidation, you're not going to, no, bind mom, I cut off her head, I throw her in the lake of fire. No. When it is a relative, you get me, Reverend Sam. Some of us have prayed dangerous prayers and we've killed our own parents. Because if it is your own parent who took you to the shrine, you're going to say, I bind you by fire. Let thunder catch you where you are. And the old woman is digging in the garden. Then you hear, Pongulu, mommy died. What has happened? Your prayers at All Saints Cathedral, you were sending fire to the one that bewitched you. No one bewitched your own mother, took you to the shrine. So when we are dealing with satanic intimidation, we have to bring in repentance. We have to bring in a place of repentance. Praise the Lord. So that when the Lord begins to deal with the issue, it is Satan. Satan is the author. He's the source of all intimidation. Praise the Lord. From, from Genesis Revelation, before time began up to now, Satan is the source of all intimidations. Praise God. Now, when you give birth again, you give birth only girls, they begin. Where are the boys? Why don't you have boys? Who will be the heir? How many of us have been challenged in such questions? You have no child, they are intimidating. You have children, they are intimidating you. You have one sex, then. <laughs> Praise God, whatever it is. This afternoon, we are going to go before the Lord and tell God, all the kinds of intimidations and ask God to fight for us. He that did it for David can do it for you. Praise the Lord. People can threaten you at church. People can threaten you at office. You know, intimidation is a spirit. Tell your neighbor, intimidation is a spirit. It's not just a feeling. Tell it to your neighbor. Intimidation is a spirit. It's not just a feeling. It is a spirit that keeps you in bondage. Mm. So whatever you're going through, I don't know who is keeping you in bondage. Employees who are here, your bosses can threaten you. You don't do this, you lose your job, you're fired. Hello? Hello? 
The threats can come like that. You don't do this, and this is going to happen to you. And surely you're fired. Why? Because the person is in authority. But child of God, this afternoon, I want you to know your God like David knew his God. You may be fired because the person is in authority, but you will not be fired forever. You will be fired by an earthly person, but the king of kings will give you a job. He will reward you like he did to David. Hallelujah. So do not fear the authorities and rules and regulations of men and forget your God. How I pray that when you're threatened, go back to the closet and say, God, I've been threatened for nothing. Vindicate me. Hello? <laughs> Praise God. There is another type of, of, of threats that came for Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah. When I suggest go there, I love, I love that portion of scripture because for me, uh, as a person in prayer, I love to look out for such scriptures that have worked for men and women of God and how they overcame. Praise the Lord. The book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 6 has a very interesting, it actually starts from chapter 4, where this Tobiah and Sanballat, Sanballat and Tobiah, when Nehemiah was, well, got a burden to rebuild the walls, these guys conspired and came and told him, what you're building, even the foxes will pull it down. Can you hear that? Have you ever been there and you have, you're trying to build in your village? You're, you're the first one to graduate. You're the first one to put up a house. And then the villagers will know you come and say, ah, look at him. Even what he's building is going to come down. Now, if you don't know your God, you stop at foundation. There are some people who are built and they will tell you, you're building on the road of demons. And you also stop at that. It's a threat. Are we together? When you come to chapter 6, let me read a few verses. Sanbala Tobia, Geshem the Arab, and the rest of our enemies found out that I had finished rebuilding the wall and that no gaps remained, though we had not yet set up the doors in the gates. So Sanbala and Geshem sent a message asking me to meet them at one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But I realized they were plotting to harm me. Mark no statements. So I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work. Tell your neighbor, I am engaged in a great work of the Lord. So I can't come. That's what he said. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? That's verse 3 he's asking. Verse 4. Four times they sent the message, the same message. And each time I gave the same reply, friends, devils don't get tired. Do you get me? Satan doesn't get tired. Even after Nehemiah had responded like that, four times they sent the same message. And each time I gave the same reply, the fifth time St. Ballard's servant came with an open letter in his hand. And this is what he said, like some of us receive open letters in offices. And they want to assure you that you've read it. They want to assure you that everyone knows you're going. Listen, there is a rumor among the surrounding nations and Geshem. Tell me it is true that you and the Jews are planning to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. Can you imagine when you're doing something good for the church? And then somebody wants to turn, turn behind your back to spoil you. He begins to say something that you're not saying. You hear me? You're rebuilding the church for good. You're restoring the office for good. But someone with satanic heart, satanic agenda, goes behind and says such a rumor. A rumor around the nation, not one place, around the nation. It can be like different offices all are talking about what you're doing that is not right. You get me? And so Nehemiah is saying, tell me it's not, I mean this was saying, tell me it's not true. And the Jews are planning to rebel. And that is why you are building the wall. According to his reports, you plan to be their king. Can you imagine? <laughs> he also reports that you have appointed prophets in Jerusalem to proclaim about you. Look, there is a king in Judah. You can be a, 
you can be very sure that this report will get back to the king. So I suggest that you come and talk it over with me. That's a threat, eh? Verse 8, I replied, there is no truth. That's Nehemiah. There is no truth in any part of your story. You are making up the whole thing. Verse 9, they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining that they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Hallelujah. Give a hand clap to God for such men and women that know they are God. Let me tell you, when rumors come about you and you know that what, you are, what they are saying is not true, continue doing the right thing. The Lord will speak for you. When rumors, rumors were moving, because these people saw that they could not attack Nehemiah physically because they tried. So they started to attack his character. Some of us, Jupiter, they can attack your character by saying you're loving all the girls in the worship team. So that your wife comes and says, now I no longer want you in the worship team because you're loving all the girls. Now for us who are women clergy, they can say we are loving all these gentlemen here. You see, they are now in the retreat. What are they doing there? Now if you don't know your God, you will also leave ministry and say, you know what? Uh, for the sake of my marriage, let me do what? Put off this collar. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray tonight, this afternoon. How I pray that you pray like Nehemiah did. In verse 14, it says, Remember, oh my God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sanballat have done. That's what I'm going to tell my God. If there is any rumor out there, if there is anyone planning evil, friends of God, personal attacks can hurt. Christism can hurt. And those are the things that the devil uses. Legalism, you know, philosophies of man. You know, wisdom is not bad. But when people go into deeper philosophies and they don't want to attach scripture, you know, a man Solomon was a man that loves wisdom, but he came to, to learn everything and said, you know what? Everything is vanity, meaningless. So sometimes we are intimidated by philosophies of men, you know, by all this legalism, criticism, you know, you, and, and, and these people want you to be under their feet. So if you do not, you do not know your God, that we are in the days like these people were in, when people are threatening you, prophets are threatened, prophets are also threatening back, you know, pastors are threatening, you know, today there are so many false pastors that are threatening congregants. If you do not give, you're going to hell. Where is it written? If you don't give offerings, you're going to hell. Where is it written? It's not written like that. But they're using it as a someone preaching and threatening. You can only tell the church, if you're not giving, there are consequences. But you're not going to go to hell. Whether you've given or you've not given, if you don't know God, if you're not born again, your money in heaven will not say, how much did you give in heaven? No. Where was your heart? Were you born again? Were you a believer? Praise the Lord. So giving is very good, but getting born again is the best. Hallelujah. And when you're born again, you begin to reason with satanic intimidators in your office, at church, at your home, and you reply them with wisdom and only pray to God. Praise the Lord. Finally, Luke chapter 13, the scripture that I was given. Luke 13. Luke 13, the Bible says from verse 31, Jesus grieves after Jerusalem. At that time, some Pharisees say to him, get away from here. If you want to leave, Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Can you imagine? That's the whole king they are telling that. Get away from here. Get away from here if you want to leave. Herod, the Antipas, wants to kill you. Look at how Jesus responds. Jesus replied, go tell the fo that fox <laughs> that I will keep on casting out demons 
and healing people today and tomorrow. And the third day, I will accomplish my purpose. Clap to Jesus. There are people who are telling us we should stop praying for people. We should stop healing and deliverance. I, pr I pray that they hear this statement from Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, those that knew me before I became a clergy, when I was in the Church of the Resurrection, we used to pray in the upper room. And one of these elders that did not believe in praying in tongues and praying and healing people, so he came to the upper room and slapped us, slapped all of us that were, what, that were speaking in tongues. And uh, we did not slap back, but we said, God, deal with him. Now, that is a simple prayer, but it's a real prayer. So one time when I was now a clergy at St. Andrew's Church, Bukoto, he comes around. And then I'm seated, and, and the, the spirit of anger wants to come back. This is the guy that slapped us the other time. But my dear, the Lord told me, do you see how he looks like? The other time he was wealthy. The guy was now on foot. He was looking bad. So God said, I dealt with him. Just listen to why he has come. And he had actually come to beg. Now, that time the guy was not a beggar. He was among the wealthy guys. Why am I saying this? Tobias and Sanballat are everywhere. But we are not going to fight with flesh. We are not going to fight because we don't even have the energy. We are like David. The one that fights for us is there. The one that owns the battles is there. The Lord of the heavens' armies is there. Praise the Lord. So we are going to deal with satanic intimidations, not by flesh. Don't begin saying, go deal with Nicholas. Go deal with Patricia. No. Go deal with a Satan. Satan behind Nicholas. Deal with Satan behind Patricia. Before you know it, the Patricia will come when the other spirit has been undressed and you will see the real Patricia. Praise the Lord. Who can be restored to the place of God? So, what is your Goliath today? Who is your Goliath? What is your Goliath? What's the giant before you? What is the intimidation? What is the threat? Jesus has given us the answer. Let me reread it. Mouth, uh, Luke chapter 13 from verse 31. At that time, some Pharisees say to him, get away from here if you want to leave. Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And the third day I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today and tomorrow. And the next day I'll proceed on my way. For it wouldn't, it would, it wouldn't do for it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And now look, your house is abandoned and you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Friends of God, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. The Lord has given us opportunities to repent. Just like Jesus is saying that you'll cry for yourself, you'll want him and you'll be no more. Praise the Lord. The time of judgment, there will be no more repentance. The time of being in heaven, there will be no more time to say, I forgive so and so, because Jesus will have done it all, and it will be time for judgment. If you died in Christ, you raise and be judged and enter heaven, if you write us. Now, if you die in sin, you will automatically be called, and Satan will be waiting for you, the owner of all intimidations. Praise the Lord. So it is important for us to know that there is one that fights for us. It's important for us to put away all the threats that people have done against us and hold on to what we know. Hold on to the word of God. 
There are so many scriptures that talk about very good things that Jesus is and, 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 and Jesus has done and what he's able to. You know, Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1 says, The wicked flee when no one pursues them. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And there is one that I love personally. Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. The Lord will flatter them. He will flatter those who flatter the covenant of God. But those that know they are God, they shall be strong and do mighty exploits. Hallelujah. So I don't, know, I don't know who flatters you. I don't know who is flattering over your God. But as long as you know your God, I, I, I stand and tell God, I am only a woman. I'm only a man. I am only a youth. But inside me, there is a giant God. Inside me, there is a bigger God, bigger than the situations at hand. Praise the Lord. Those are the scriptures that I use, and the Lord gives me a sober mind. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, which I want all of us to read. Somebody up there, can you project? 1 Peter 5, 8. 1 Peter 5, 8, are you there? Then we pray. First Peter 5, 8, then we pray, be good to go and carry on the exploits of God. All right, it's there. Can we read that together in that version? Mm. Praise the Lord. Five, verse 8. Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a rolling lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Praise the Lord. May we stand up on our feet. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God gave us a spirit. Not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. Praise the Lord. So if you've been threatened, you've been fearful, tonight don't flee. You have a God who knows you. You have a God who will fight for you. Praise the Lord. And the wicked will flee when no one is chasing them, but your God will. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who does what? Who strengthens me. All you need is the strength of God in battle. Praise the Lord. So if your strength is going down, if you've been intimidated, if mafias have been intimidating you, they want to buy your land. A friend of mine was being intimidated by mafias. She was living in the United States of America and she came and found her 13 acres on Gaza Road were being taken. And then she came, I gave her scriptures. I said, for me, I don't know lawyers. But I have some, but I, I, I think God is the best judge. And so we went before God. I said, we're going to pray and fast. The mafias were calling. The mafias were threatening her. They even sent out her picture and where she is. They sent out a photo and, and, and said the husband is actually abroad. She is the one around. Can you imagine? Like mafias have all this satellite and network. But I said there is a God who owns the satellite. There is a God who, set, who, who owns the universe. There is a God who can search them with hunters and fishermen. And we prayed and prayed seven days. On the seventh day, she was called to court. And justice was ruled in on her, on her behalf, you know, in her favor, in her favor. Praise the Lord in her favor. And they had told her, give us seven million, give us these millions. She said, I have no millions. I told her we have God. Tell them you have no seven millions. You have God. And friends of God, when you have God, even justice in the nation will be given to you because the Lord who owns us can speak to us. He can speak to the judges. He can speak to the, to, you know, to your bosses that you feel are hard. Praise the Lord. Today she owns the land. Her daughter has introduced. The devil had intimidated her so that she doesn't even focus on the upcoming good events. But after we had overcome this, there was introduction in the home. 
now there is peace. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand to the heavens and say, God, I have been intimidated. I have been threatened. Tell him those areas. Tell him those words people have used to threaten you. Whether at church, whether in your office, report to the Lord. The Bible says, Nehemiah said, Oh God, remember what San Balat and Tobia have done. Come on, remind him. Whether it is your landlord, whether it is your boss, whether it is your seniors, whether it is your juniors, they are threatening you. Whether it is mafias, whether it is people that you don't know, they have sent threatening messages on your phone. They have sent threatening messages on your WhatsApp. Whatever it is, they have brought rumors. They have brought letters. Report to the Lord this afternoon. Report to the Lord this afternoon. Report to the Lord about your family. Report to the Lord about your land. Report to the Lord about your job. Report to the Lord about your status. Report to the Lord. Maybe you don't have children. They are threatening you that they will abandon you. They will chase you away from the clan. As a married woman, you are not protected. Active, you're not fruitful. They have said old words. Come on, report to the Lord. Oh God of the heavens, armies. They have said you're educated for nothing. What good can come out of you? They have said you bought that land. You'll never build on it. Come on, report to the Lord. The threats that people are saying. There is a God who doesn't know threats. There is a God who is not frightened. There is a God who is not frightened. They are threatening you to divorce you, that you'll be divorced. Everyone in your background divorced. Forces, marriages fail. Come on, pray, 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 child of God. You know what is in your home. You know what people are saying. You know what is in your office. <coughs> pray, 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 pray. You have these minutes here. You have these minutes of deliverance as we deal with satanic, satanic intimidations. This is your day. Deal with those satanic intimidations. Give God your heart. Surrender your heart to the Lord and tell him, forgive me. I have fought battles in the physical. I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I am only a woman. I am only a man. I am only a youth. Father, forgive me. Come on, repent of your sins. Repent where, where you've used your own words to fight. Repent of your sin and be holy. Be righteous this afternoon. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord to have mercy upon you, child of God, and vindicate you. Come on, tell him, tell him. You may not have lawyers to support you. You may not have money to buy it. You may not have money to buy your name out. But there is a God who washes us with the blood of Jesus. That when he washes our names, our names will no longer be used for threats in the name of Jesus. Father, have mercy upon us, O God. Deal with the intimidators. Deal with the Tobias and, and St. Bernard, O God. According to your way, my Lord, my God. Forgive us, O Lord, my God. For the sake of the church. Church, for the sake of all saints cathedral on behalf of this church oh god we plead for mercy we plead for mercy lord where a lord almighty satan has used intimidations over men and women of god over servants of the lord father have mercy over us oh lord my god have mercy on us oh lord where people have used their money to intimidate those that are poor forgive us oh lord where people have used language to intimidate us, O oh Lord, where people have used their wealth to intimidate us, O oh Lord, we are reporting to you. Where people have used words, rumors, forgive us, Lord. We are rumor mongers as a church. We are people who kill. We want to kill people because of rumors. We want to disarm their property. We want to steal from them. Father, forgive us on behalf of Ugandans, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, have mercy. And deal with satanic intimidations, oh Lord. Today we take on your word, my God. We depend on your word, Jehovah. We depend on you, Christ the Savior. Christ the Savior, my God. You are the Lord that can save us out of this situation. You saved David. You can save us, oh Lord. You saved Nehemiah. You can save us, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King of Kings. Come on, come on, deal with the rulers and authorities. They are rulers and authorities. Put on the full armor of God. 
put on the full armor of God this afternoon and deal with authorities and rulers that are threatening you as an employee, threatening your children. Those the intimidation, put on the armor of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, finally, brethren, be strong in the arm of the Lord. Be strong in the mighty power of the Lord. Put on the armor of God. And we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but wrestle against principalities, powers of darkness. Father, in the name of Jesus, we put on the full armor of God. We dress up the helmet of salvation. We put on the breastplate of righteousness, righteousness of God. We put on the breastplate, uh, the, the belt of truth, Abba Father. We put on the shield of faith, oh God, and the sword of the Spirit. We put on our feet, oh God the shoes of the gospel, the gospel peace, Abba Father. Now pull down every principality that rules where you work. Pull down the principality that rules where you work. Pull, pull down the controlling spirit, whether it is finances they are using to control, whether it is education. Pull down the controlling spirit they are using to control you, to intimidate you, to manipulate you. In the name of Jesus, Father, we tear down every power of hell. We tear down every witchcraft they are using against us. We tear down every poisoning. We tear down by fire, by fire. Deliver somebody this afternoon. Deliver somebody this afternoon. Fire, fire, fire. Deliver, deliver. Deliver us, O Lord. Yocha, yocha, yocha. The spirits of hell that move in the spiritual realm, that move where you stay in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of a living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Pull down the authorities that rule in their kids, that rule in the departments of government in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of a living God, by fire, by fire. Pull down, pull down authorities, rulers of darkness, powers of witchcraft, wicked forces, by fire, by by fire, society burned by fire, devils, the sun burners, the Tobiases, burned by fire, burned rumors by fire, burned evil letters by fire. Those who are sending evil letters to people and people are reading them and their eyes are going blind. Fire! Where they are bewitching people's heads, where they are making people nothing, where they are using wicked words by fire. We send the Holy Ghost fire to fight for us this afternoon. Deal with every satanic intimidation. Deal with every satanic intimidation. Deal with every satanic intimidation by fire, by fire. My Lord, my God, where are they using words, oh Lord, my God? Father, this is the afternoon you have given us, oh Lord, my God. Father, we come out, oh Lord, my God, out of this place with victory, out of this place with victory, my God. Where are they are using javelin, where are they are using swords, where are they are using guns, where are they are using money. Fire, fire, disarm them, disarm them, disarm them, disarm them, disarm them, disarm them, disarm them. Throw them to confusion, throw them to confusion, throw them to confusion. Break their legs, oh God. Cut off, cut off their serpent's head. Cut off the serpent's head. The serpent in the offices. The serpent in the offices. The serpents in the leg. The serpents at the crosses. Fire, fire. Burn them in the name of Jesus. My Lord, my God, crush the serpents, crush the serpents, crush the ruling powers over your hands. Somebody is getting delivered right now. If they bewitch your hands, they bewitch your hands with witchcraft. Fire, fire, fire. There you go, there you go. They have been bewitching your letters. They have been bewitching your appointments. Fire over you, man. Fire over you, man. Fire over you, man. Be delivered. Be delivered right now. Be delivered right now. Where they use letters, they wrote you a letter. You read it and you went blind. Your hands don't have to work. You don't touch money. Fire! Fire on your hands. Fire on your head. Fire on your head. There comes the fire of God. There comes the fire of God into your office. Where they tied your papers. Where they tied your womb. Where they take your land title. Where they took it. Where they took your shoes. Where they took your Bible. They buried it in the grave. And they said you never preached the gospel. Come on, lift up your hands to the heavens and say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Deliver me. 
deliver my life, Lord. Where the devil had intimidated me for years. I come out today. I come out today with my victory. That devil has assigned some letters concerning your life, but the God of fire is consuming them. Where the devil has been prowling like a lion looking for one to devour. They will not devour you. They will not devour your husband. They will not devour your wife. They will not devour your children. 